Sean Sewell and Gamer.com podcast. This will be a quick episode, probably about 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes top. And I'm going to recap what we're working on and upcoming guests for the Ingamer.com podcast. Most recent guest was my friend and mentor, Michael Doc Hartle. Um, I went through the SFG level one with him my last time around. He's my team lead, Team Metallica, really awesome guy. And then, of course, we did SFL, which is a Strong First Lifter, which is their barbell based program through Strong First. And we hosted him at our gym, Existence Athletics. So check out that episode. It's the second time Doc has been on the show, and he's just a wealth of information, and it's a great conversation. And the day before that was John Sears from Gregory Backpacks, the vice president uh, and president of North America Operations, who learned under um, the Gregory Backpack founder. And we get to pick his brain in the Gregory uh, backpack office there in Utah, and it's just a fun conversation in a sm- such a small world. He actually helped design my first backpacking backpack, which is the Gregory Baltero, which is still available. It's a really well engineered backpack, so a lot of fun in those episodes. And um, upcoming guests, I'm just chatting right now with uh, Steve Cotter, founder of IKFF. Uh, that is, um, there is Strong First, which is more the hard style kettlebell certification. Love Strong First, obviously went through all the courses with them and work with Pavel and we'll be hosting Pavel at our gym for the strong endurance event for the second time. And then Steve Cotter learned directly under Pavel with Pavel uh, at the very beginning. And um, he found IKFF international kettlebell fitness found federation. And I've gone through IKFF levels one and two twice and uh, really appreciate having that in the toolkit and how, um, Ken Blackburn, who's who I learned from, how he and Steve teach that kind of kettlebell technique, uh, different kind of breathing, longer duration, th- different goals, same tool, just different applications, which is which is great. There's a lot of ways to approach training, conditioning, health, and fitness and wellness, as well as a lot of ways to approach the outdoors. Who's to say skiing is better than snowboarding? I like snowboarding. Who's to say giveaway sport is better than hard style? It all depends on the user and what the application is. So really looking forward to talking with Steve and then Brett Jones um, as well. Email him back and forth today to get him back on for a second time. And again, huge amount of respect and appreciation for Brett. So that'll be a fun conversation to look forward to. In the outdoor gear realm, review that will probably be up right after this podcast, Ultra Lone Peak 5, my friend Andrew. Piotrowski out on the East Coast. He is just doing such a great job doing great reviews, especially based off of trail running, um, stand up paddle boarding, uh, kayaking, canoeing, a lot of the stuff that we don't get to do here in Colorado right now because it is literally snowing sideways as I'm recording this. Watching on my window, I wish I could show you. Well, I suppose I could turn the camera around and show you, but it is snowing sideways. And most recently at, the, at our gym, again, Existence, I was training my, my students outside in the snow which is very amusing for a lot of the other people attending the facility like why would you go outside in the snow to train well simple question with another question why wouldn't you we love snow always camping in snow split boarding skiing fat biking running around plant the dogs plant our nieces in the snow snow's great we love it so why not go train in the snow builds character so all right, on to what we're reviewing. Really exciting stuff right now. This is kind of a fun time of year where, uh, well, tomorrow I'm going to split boarding. Uh, it's going to be a powder day. Super excited about that. Snow conditions are stabilizing, which is fantastic. So you get to do bigger missions. Um, safety, things are checking the boxes for being safer conditions. And um, so we just got done reviewing as of yesterday, the brand new, so new, it's not even out until next year, the Never Summer Proto split board. And it's actually cambered. Most of the split boards that we review and I enjoy are rockered and or rockered and cambered. And I still absolutely love rocker cambered. I will always love rocker cambered. But sometimes cambered boards are what is needed when you're, um, in my opinion, in a steeper terrain and you need to feel more connected with the mountain and they also tour way better than rocker or rocker camber boards. They just have better contact with the mountain. So uh, they nailed it. Uh, I delivered the the board back to Vince and Never Summer crew tomorrow, Friday. 
uh, whatever, uh, April 16th, that will be. And I don't want to give it up. It's a really good board, but they did a great job with that. So that Proto Review is up. You can check it out. And then um, more things along that line. Let's see. Patagonia sent over some really cool stuff. New Alpine pants just came out. And then their Capellini cool wool shirt, which I've been using since August when I received my first one. And I love that shirt. Love wool. This is a, a cool wool shirt, which we have a review up as well. I'll get to that in a minute. They sent over the long sleeve as well as a short sleeve as well as the Fitzroy logo, which is really attractive. And then they sent over, I'm going to get real quick, my favorite backpack. A backpack I've always wanted to use even before I started in GearMet. And it showed up. And I'm going to show you real quick. Oh, yeah. It's the Black Hole 32 liter. It's made of recycled fishing nets. Awesome. So I've got loaded to the gills, if you can see the video. If not, if you're just listening to us, basically it is an urban style, water resistant, recycled, polyurethane coated, really attractive backpack. And I have it loaded, probably 30 pounds of camera equipment and my client and student files and notes and stuff like that. Really good looking backpack. That review will be up here pretty soon. And then the torrent shell pants. So we did a review on the torrent shell. In fact, we're the first, is it, I don't want to brag. I get to pinch myself sometimes, like pinch, that we get to be the first company person to usually review a product before anybody else. And, and that's the case again for the Patagonia torrent shell jacket, three layer eco nail, which is recycled fishing nets primarily. Did the jacket review last summer? Was it two summers ago? I forget. But anyways, we'll have the pant review up here soon. I was using it in the snow earlier, walking the dogs and, you know, it's great rainproof or rain pants and very fair price. We'll have that review up here really soon. Sax is sending over some new swimwear, which is going to be really cool to check out. And I, I got to get the courage up to shoot the boxer review videos. I've got several boxer reviews to do, and there's no better way to review boxers than to put it in the video. So, um, I gotta work on my core a little bit more, my posture. But uh, yeah, so look forward or don't look forward to seeing me on the YouTube in my boxers, kind of awkward, but it'll be up there, Saks. And then also um, Toad and Company, really great company. I like Toad and Company for a lot of reasons. Um, I'm gonna drag my personal life into this real quick. My younger brother, before he passed away, was high functioning special needs. Now, Toad and Company employs a lot of high functioning special needs in their warehouse facility. So it means a lot to me that they do that and they make really good and sustainable, eco-friendly um, clothing, very attractive stuff. So uh, we actually just went and got our first um, COVID shot and a t-shirt I was wearing was uh, I'm with her, which is a picture of the planet, uh, really good message. And uh, that is a Toad and Company t-shirt in case you're curious. And I'll have reviews up on those as well as their boxers. They're really comfortable boxers. So a lot of boxer uh, briefly covered in the upcoming YouTube engagement channel. And then Decathlon sent over quite a few fitness-based stuff. Decathlon is a very well-known French company. Basically, they're like, I'm trying to think of American equivalent, like a Costco, but for outdoor gear. So the prices are very fair and quality is very good. Uh, their offerings are so far across the board. We did a, a inflatable two-person kayak review for them two summers ago. We still love that kayak. Um, they sent over a pair of really attractive hiking boots and a spin bike. So my wife is taking to the spin bike. She loves that thing. And I'll have the review up for them as well as an adjustable squat rack, which is really nice. So a lot of people are getting into fitness, especially last year for home gyms. It's a really great uh, setup. It's like $120 for an adjustable squat rack. And then um, this is the part I'm really excited about. Those are all really cool things too, but tents. They have a two-second tent. We've done the review in the last two years of the two-second tent. Somehow they made it more compact and like shaved off three pounds. So I'm going camping this weekend. I don't think I'll be testing it in a blizzard. Um, but here soon enough when it's not snowing sideways and five degrees out Fahrenheit, I will be doing that review. Look forward to that. And then they sent over, this is really cool, air tube inflatable tent. So instead of using tent poles, you know, typical temples it's chambers of air and you pump it up and then it comes up so look forward to that review um biolite sent over a stove and uh i went to go test this two weeks ago going camping and i forgot firewood very embarrassing so biolite i'm sorry the review is coming but i'm um, looking forward to that and then the brio stove i kind of teased you guys on instagram and facebook about a month ago with that that's actually made in pennsylvania very well made it's got a syrian plate so I got some steaks. We're going to go sear those up in the storm. I 
my friend and colleague Ryan Humphreys. Sea to Summit have a new water cell, like a dromedary bag. I believe a uh, six, a 10, a 20, and a 40 liter. I have the 10 liter. It's very attractive. I have a little teaser video up on Instagram as well. Basically, it's a 10 liter bag, welded seams, and you can hang it from a tree or uh, I hang it from uh, my Yakima roof rack. And then you have the gravity flow system for water and you can change out the nozzles and it turns into a shower, which is really cool. Uh, very well made. Sea to Summit stuff always is. So I'll have that up. Manzana sent over a two liter insulated and three liter regular water bladder. A uh, bunch of cool features on that. So we'll be putting those to use. Life Straw. Um, I don't have enough for me. Dang it. Um, it Life Straw is a really great company. They they sent over a really attractive 40 ounce vacuum insulated water bottle with a water filter built in. And uh, for every purchase you make with them, they provide clean drink of water to a person who needs it in a different country. Very thoughtful. And then, oh my, oh, really excited about this. So Dometic. Um, Dometic is not a new company by any means. They've been doing this for a long time. And it's a new area for us, though, going into overlanding and modified, almost RV-ish area. So I've been picking their brains of uh, my friend Jeff Welsh and Damien and Maz Yahoo, all people who have Dometic appliances in their RVs, campers, conversions, or overlanding vehicles. And um, it's my first experience with it. They sent over a 55 liter yeah 55 liter refrigerator system based cooler and this really badass it's just out of camera view battery lithium ion battery i think it's a 40 working hour battery with um all the accoutrement it's it's a big investment 850 dollars for that battery but we are going to install it well i was going to do it today but it's a blizzard but so i'll probably do it tomorrow um a solar panel from Renogy, a 100 watt solar panel on top of our roof nest tent. And then we'll have those wires going into the truck to the battery to trickle charge. And then we'll have that powering the Dometic as well as other um, AC appliances. Not No blenders and crock pots, but, you know, computer, drone batteries, stuff like that. So a lot of cool things we're going to be working on <laughs> reviewing. A lot of videos are coming. I kind of crank through. Sorry if you're a subscriber or not. Sorry, I guess. Every day there's a video for like the last month and a half. So we probably got pinged quite a bit. So wasn't trying to overwhelm you with content, but I was getting a lot created and we got out quite a bit and then did not get out for about the last two weeks because, and if you park your vehicle outside, you want to listen to this, um, critters ate the delicious soy based coating around my fuel pump wiring. So I park outside and the probably a lot of you do park outside as well. What I learned after a hundred dollar repair, how you can avoid this. So this is really important. Take notes, mothballs. You can hang, three or four mothballs and uh, a sock or pantyhose in your engine compartment. And uh, I'll, I'll put a picture of that below if you guys are curious and, or you can use essential oil of mint in the engine compartment as well. It detours the critters from chewing on your cables. And I know a lot of people who park outside have probably experienced this expensive repair. Um, yeah, let's avoid that. I don't want to poison any critters, but I don't want them eating my <laughs> soy based, um, coating anytime soon. So I believe that is all of it. And I think we got that done. Yeah. 15 minutes. I was right on time. All right. I'm sure there's about a million things I forgot to mention, but I'll say that for another time. So hopefully the next episode will be with the one and only Steve Cotter. So, um, again, any questions, please drop me a line, Sean at ingearment.com. And until next time, take care.